Ever since it launched, the Poco X2 has dominated the sub 20k market here in India. But can it defend its crown from the new kid on the block, the Realme 7 Pro? Let's find out in today's video. Hey guys, Ash here from C4 Retech. And if you do end up liking what you see in this video, please consider subscribing and turning on notifications by hitting that bell icon. Let's now get started. Both these phones have their own unique takes on the gradient back design. The main difference here is the materials used. On one hand, we have the Gorilla Glass 5 protected glass sandwich design of the Poco X2. The 3D curved glass body here, it feels premium in hand, but it also happens to be a fingerprint and dust magnet. The weight too is a little bit on the higher side at 208 grams. On the other hand though, the Realme 7 Pro, despite packing in the same 4500 mAh battery, weighs about 25 grams lesser. But that is a reason for this, and the reason is, Realme is using plastic. But it also has a two-tone finish and reflects light, kinda like how a, a glass bag does, kinda. So a lighter phone with a plastic bag or a heavier phone with a glass bag. Now this is the choice we are left with. So what's gonna feel more premium for you? What is it that you're gonna wanna pick up? I'm gonna let you choose it because beauty lies in the eye of the beholder and all that. The larger footprint of the Poco X2 translates directly into more screen real estate. But that is not the only difference here. We get a 6.67 inch Full HD Plus IPS LCD panel on the Poco X2. There's a bill shaped cutout to the top for the two selfie cameras. And the most important thing, this display, it refreshes at 120 Hertz. Now, in comparison, we have a smaller 6.4 inch, again, Full HD Plus panel on the Realme 7 Pro, uh, but this one happens to be AMOLED. It's got only a single punch hole to the top left, but the fact that it's AMOLED, you know, that's a positive, that's something in Realme's favor, but when it comes to refresh rates, it's still 60 Hertz. So again, we're gonna have to choose here either 120 Hertz IPS LCD or 60 Hertz AMOLED. Personally, I like AMOLED panels. I'm not gonna say no because it's got those inky blacks, like I say, almost every video. It's got vibrant colors. It's just livelier. Uh, and for media, media consumption, it's really great. But for gaming and even day-to-day -day usage, I just like the extra refresh rate. The 120 Hertz refresh, it is, well, uh, no pun intended, refreshing but if you are somebody who who prefers to watch more videos than actually game and you're okay with taking a hit on the refresh rate then hey you could choose amoled and again this is more of a personal choice now speaking of gaming the internals here they are quite similar on paper the snapdragon 730g on the poco x2 might seem to have an advantage over the snapdragon 720g and it actually does, but it's not that huge a difference. The Realme 7 Pro, it comes close at times. Numbers aside, with day-to-day -day usage, both phones are neck and neck. But the faster refresh, it does mean the Poco X2, it feels, it feels better to use in hand. Whether you're just swiping through menus or switching between apps, it just feels better. As far as games go, we have the Adreno 618 GPU inside both the Realme 7 Pro and the Poco X2. The X2 seemingly has a clock speed advantage, but that's mostly more than offset actually, because the X2 has to push double the frames. So I'm gonna say, with regards to what games it can run, you're not gonna really see a lot of differences. But when you're playing a game that supports higher refresh rates like Altos Odyssey, the Poco X2, that's gonna offer you the better experience. On the memory front, the Realme 7 Pro comes with six or eight gigs of LPDDR4X RAM paired with 128 gigs of UFS 2.1 storage. As for the Poco X2, well, we've got 664, 6128 and 8256 variants. So for most people, the performance here, it's gonna be similar across both phones. But like I said, for gaming, it's the Poco X2 that is better, which means it does win the performance round. Interestingly, both these phones seem to share their similar internals from similar SoC and RAM storage right down to the same 4500 mAh battery. Now, okay, given the SoC is not exactly the same, but it's the same family, it's still the Qualcomm Snapdragon gaming focused chips, 720G, 730G. Now, with regards to battery, the Poco X2, it has the larger IPS screen and runs at a higher refresh rate. So it is a little more taxing on the battery. The Realme 7 Pro, it's got the smaller panel and the 60 Hertz refresh. So it gets about five to 10% better performance with battery life. As far as charging goes, Poco's got a very respectable 27 watt 
fast charger that can get it from 0 to 100 in an hour, uh, an hour and eight minutes to be precise. The Realme 7 Pro though blows it out of the water. That's a 65 watt charger that you're seeing and this can get from 0 to 100 in nearly half the time. To, well, to be precise here, 34 minutes. So quite clearly, battery Realme 7 Pro wins. Then we get to software. We have MIUI 11 on the Poco X2 and Realme UI on the Realme 7 Pro. Both are built on top of Android 10 and we've seen a lot of these two interfaces in the past so I'm not really gonna focus on the individual features because I'm pretty sure you guys are bored, to, I mean you guys have been bored out of your minds listening to way too many YouTubers talk about it and I'm pretty sure you guys are familiar with them. So instead let's actually talk about the ad situation. One of the highlights of buying a POCO device is that unlike Redmi, MIUI does not have display ads on POCO, whereas with Realme UI, you do get display ads, but there is a one-click uh, kill switch for it. So this kind of boils down to personal preference. Me personally, I lean towards MIUI here. Next, let's get to optics, but before that, let's make a quick pit stop at Sunrise. Running through the similarities first, we get fingerprint sensors on both phones for biometrics. It's a side-mounted capacitive scanner on the POCO X2, whereas on the Realme 7 Pro, we get an under-the-display fingerprint scanner. Both phones also have face unlock and they were evenly quick. They are also equipped with headphone jacks and have support for high resolution audio. The 7 Pro adds support for Dolby Atmos and stereo speakers into the mix. So while the Realme 7 Pro has the advantage when it comes to music, the POCO X2 comes with an IR blaster up top. And I guess now is as good a time as any to mention that we did try taking and receiving calls on both phones. And in the time that we spent with both, there was not a lot of difference there. Cell reception, call quality, they evened out. They were more or less the same. So like I said, let's now get to the cameras. We have quad camera modules uh, to the back of both phones and both phones have a 64 megapixel primary snapper. With the POCO X2, we get the Sony IMX686 sensor that's paired with the f1.89 lens. With the Realme 7 Pro, we got the Sony IMX682 sensor paired with the f1.8 lens. To no one's surprise, the pictures taken by these two look quite similar again. That's been a trend throughout this video. We've been seeing a lot of similarities. The only main difference here is the color temperature. The POCO X2 tends to click warmer pictures, which means the greens look lusher. While the Realme 7 Pro's cooler images, they tend to show off bluer skies. Other than these differences, the phones, they turned out nice and sharp with great dynamic range. When it comes to low light performance though, we have an interesting scenario. The Realme 7 Pro, it takes a long time to capture night shots and they end up turning out slightly blurry. However, under complete darkness, the Realme 7 Pro comes out with brighter pictures. And if we hold the phone steady, the overall picture quality, it's actually better. Realme also offers a pro night mode where we can manually set focus and even control ISO, shutter speed and white balance. Other than that, the 7 Pro also gets a dedicated tripod and starry night mode, both of which the POCO X2 does not have. Next, ultrawides. Both phones are equipped with 8 megapixel snappers and, and it's very difficult to tell them apart. Again, it's the color science that remains as the main difference between these two uh, cameras, just like with the primary snappers. Now for the last two sensors, we've got two megapixel snappers used for macro and portrait photography. When it comes to macros, the Realme takes the more vibrant picture. The saturated color tones don't always help, especially in photos like this one. The color of the rust on the lock, it kind of looks unnatural. Turning it around, we have the dual 20 plus two megapixel uh, arrangement on the POCO X2 and that's going up against the lone 32 megapixel selfie snapper on the Realme uh, 7 Pro. The Realme 7 Pro's 32 megapixel higher resolution selfie snapper does retain better detail. Uh, it, it also has the better skin tone. It looks more natural. The POCO X2 on the other hand, it tends to sharpen the subject's face a tad too much for my liking. As for the portraits, the edge reduction, it's almost on par. The POCO X2, it does do a better job of retaining the background details though. What you guys are looking at right now is 4K video shot by these two phones. Sharpness, stability, not so, not so much different. The difference again is with the color temperatures. Now, other than that, Poco has a couple of special video features up its sleeve, like motion tracking, vlog style shooting, and macro video. The Realme 7 Pro though, it does a whole lot better with features like ultra steady video capture with both the primary and the wide angle lenses. There's even a portrait video capture option, which is pretty awesome, especially in this price segment. So overall, I have to give 
cameras to the 7 Pro. The primary camera here, it's stellar. It's a great Sony sensor. It captures some good looking shots and overall, it has a ho whole host of features that gives the camera on it so much more flexibility than the Poco X2. The Poco X2 is the cheaper phone. It starts at 17,500. The Realme, on the other hand, it starts at 20,000 rupees. So what are we actually getting for that extra money? An AMOLED panel, double the internal storage, 65 watt rapid fast charging, stereo speakers, and a little more functionality with the camera. Now, is this worth 2,500 rupees? Now that's the big question. If you're someone who doesn't really care about these, if you are okay going with a memory card as in a micro SD card to expand storage and don't want that inbuilt UFS 2.1 storage, if you aren't too high on these camera, the extra camera options, and if more importantly, if that 120 Hertz refreshes something that seems very important to you, it does help with the user experience after all, then the Poco X2 might be a better pick. So there you go, this has been my two cents on these two phones. Now I wanna know what you guys think. Do you think the Poco X2 is still the better choice or would you pay more and pick the AMOLED toting Realme 7 Pro? Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. As always, like, share and subscribe. If you haven't yet, turn on notifications by hitting that bell icon. And thanks a lot for watching. Till next time, my name's Ash. You've been watching C4 Retech and I'm signing off for now. You guys have a great day. Bye-bye.